Welcome, everybody. Welcome to OEN Engage. Uh, I'm Dave Ernst. I'm the executive director of the OEN, and this is the first session of what we think is a great week. There has been so much energy and uh, work put into planning this week for you and for your benefit. So um, I hope I can kick it off right here, and um, and I hope you stay engaged all week. The goal is really to help you uh, engage with uh, our community and the resources and the workshops and the things that you can get out of this community, but also to connect you with each other. And uh, that's why the word that we, we, we like the branding of engage because we're both engaging with uh, programming, engaging with each other. We hope to support that all week. My job today is to kick off the week and to um, do two things give you a brief update on how things are going in the OEN community and, and you know, almost like a state of the OEN kind of thing. But also then, number two, to perhaps challenge us to go a little bit further and just to talk about what we want to be working on this year based on what we've heard from you, what we see the needs being in higher education generally. And, and so perhaps to challenge us just a little bit to stretch and so um, that's what we're going to do today, this morning. I have the next 45 minutes. I should have some time at the end for questions, but feel free to drop in questions or comments anytime, and, um, and we'll try to address them uh, as well as I can. Um, also, one last housekeeping item is that um, this session is being recorded. So uh, just be aware of that. So I am going to... Um, as I said, I've got these two things to do. I've kind of mixed them together. And so I'm not going to have a, here's an update section and here's a, here's a we're going to challenge the community a little bit section. We're going to talk about all those things at once. So I'm going to start with a big question, um, probably the biggest question maybe. Um, I want to start with the question of uh, why. Why do we do what we do? Why do we work in open education? And so I'll challenge you just for a second, just to pause and to think about that. Why do you do this work? And in fact, if you if you care to share it and just type it in the type it in the chat, uh, I I think that would be really interesting. Feel free to do that. I'm going to pause just for just for a few seconds. Wow, amazing! Thank you. I, I, I kind of think if you if you take a look at the chat, if you're able to see the chat, um, I think uh, I think it's pretty clear we're all kind of on the same page. Uh, there aren't a lot of wayward comments here. Um, Kathy, I love yours, which I love helping educators do what they wish they could do. That's that's awesome. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. In fact, it's going to be um, talking about exactly that. How can we help people do what they wish they can do? Um, you know what? I'm going to grab that, Kathy. That's our theme for today. Um, I mean, you can have lots of answers to this, right? You could just say, well, it's my job. That's why I do it. I, I get paid to do it. I show up every day. You could say, uh, some people might even say, hey, I love everything copyright related, uh, you know, or... Uh, I'm not one of those people, but you might be. Um, or we love the high salaries that are paid in the field. I didn't see that one come through. But anyway, uh, I, I think we we all are in agreement. Just from what I could see here, I couldn't keep up with all of them. But when you ask the question about why we do it, um, a number of terms you could use. Educational equity would be one. I saw some people, that's exactly what they wrote. Some wrote more descriptive statements about why we do what we do. It's possible you're in a state that doesn't even allow you to say that, by the way. So I'll, I'll paraphrase it. How about this? Ensuring access to, this is the best I could do. Ensuring, maybe you can come up with a better one. Ensuring access to educational resources, opportunities, and success for all people, regardless of their backgrounds and circumstances. Call it what you'd like. Um, 
But I th- for me, I, I, I think about it like this, you know, years ago when I made, I, I know some of you make video, have made videos of your students, kind of student testimonies about the impact of higher education or the impact of high material costs or the impact of, um, uh, um, of, of the systems there's, you know, your, your higher education systems on their learning. When I made those videos years ago, um, you know, we sat and talked to students and asked them lots of questions about, you know, cost and about affordability and all those things. But the most powerful questions I found out, I discovered that I could ask were, why did you come to college? Like, what do you want to be? What do you, what is it that you want to do? Because then what you hear are their like aspirations, their dreams. You hear, um, you hear kind of this kind of passion within them about like what, and it doesn't matter what it is, uh, whatever it happened to be, it's in them and it kind of wants to come out. And you just really, when you hear that, you just really want to help them, right? I mean, these are people, you're hearing their dreams. Um, in fact, you think about that yourself. Again, I'm going to have you pause for just a second. Think about what you wanted to be when you were a little kid or a teenager or, or somebody entering college. What did you dream of being or doing? Again, if you feel like you want to share it in the chat, feel free to do that. Okay, I'm going to pause for just a second. Hmm. Lots of writers. Musician. There we go. Librarian. Excellent. So I, I I want to just kind of tap into that because that's what our students show up with, right? They show up with this desire to do something. Um, and so now, now if you think, now think about yourself or think about, or maybe somebody you know who was not successful in college. Maybe it's because maybe it's because they lacked self-discipline or they just weren't ready to go to college, but there are others who were ready. They had this dream, they were they could do the work, they were ready to go, but somehow, you know, the the system got in the way or the system didn't include them or support them. Now it could be like in this definition, it says regardless of their background or circumstances. And if you think about our systems. And you think about how they possibly could get in the way. It could be because they don't feel, they don't make people, um, <clears throat> they don't always treat everyone equally. Let's put it that way. Could be because of race or gender, or sexual orientation. Could be because of the circumstances the students are in. Could be because the students have limited resources. We saw a lot of affordability comments go through here. <clears throat> could because it be because of the circumstances of being a first generation student and that they didn't um they didn't really maybe understand how higher education systems worked or really saw themselves as belonging there right and so there are a lot of little things that our systems can do that can have that effect you know, intentionally, unintentionally, it just is. It's the way our systems are set up. And so, um, and even affordability, you know, is still a major concern. In fact, this was a survey from this year and it says faculty are more concerned than ever about affordability. So if we come back to this, then uh, that's why we do this work, isn't it, right? We're trying to help people regardless of their background or circumstances and using open education as a tool to help them be successful. I'm an example of somebody who had very few, bar very, very few barriers. In fact, the system was working for me. 
uh, it was built for me. Uh, my parents both taught at a university. And so every night at dinner, they'd come home and I'd hear stories about, uh, well, stories that taught me what not to do in college, you know, because they would sit and talk about their students and how they were successful or not successful. And just from kind of uh, absorbing it at, at, at home, I understood kind of what it took to be successful in college. I also then had people who knew very well how the system worked that I could go to once I was in college, right, as support. So my kind of achieving my dreams only um, were really only determined how hard I was willing to work. And, and, and um, so, oh, and by the way, what do, you, what do you suppose my dream was when I was a kid? You can answer that in the chat if I want to see this. What do you what do you think I when I was a little kid, what did I want to be? And don't put the executive director of the OEN. That's not it. So when I went into college, I'll tell you in a minute. I'll tell you what I wanted to be when I was a little kid. When I went to college, entering college, I wanted to be a science teacher. I wanted to be a high school science teacher. And that's exactly what I became. Uh, I did that for about a dozen years before I came to the University of Minnesota. Uh, a world traveler, teacher, engineer, not a professor. No, nope. cowboy, astronaut. No, nope. I wanted to be a fish. That didn't work out for me. So not yet, at least. Still working on that one. I, honestly, I wanted to be a fish. All right, so um, so I, I really think that it's our job to help remove these systemic barriers or to help people around them. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and help them realize those dreams. So if we get to this question of why, I think what it is, is we wanna help others, right? We wanna do things for others so that they can succeed in those dreams that they have for themselves and helping them so that the systems don't get in the way. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we want everyone to feel like they belong there. And that's a, that's a big challenge, uh, that they belong in higher education, our larger society. We want our systems to include everyone. It's why we take the time to recognize, uh, you know, indigenous peoples who are, you know, the original stewards of these lands that we live and work on and, and why we do land acknowledgements. This is a post um, that's about a block and a half from my house. I see it every time I walk to the grocery store. It's just noting that in St. Paul, where I live, this is this is a place where this is Dakota land. And it's acknowledging that, which I think is important because again, the indigenous people, the Native Americans who live here, they, they still live here. And they're part of this community, even whether they see themselves here or not. So again, the land acknowledgement for the University of Minnesota where I work, is this, it says, we acknowledge that the University of Minnesota Twin Cities is built within the traditional homelands of the Dakota people. It's important to acknowledge the peoples on whose lands we live, learn, and work as we seek to improve and strengthen our relationships with our tribal nations. We also acknowledge that words are not enough. We must ensure that our institutions provide support, resources, and programs that increase access to all aspects of higher education for our American Indian students staff, faculty, and community members. So hopefully you can tell from, from hearing that, that it's an attempt to include people, to help people feel like they belong. Um, and they're an important part of our communities. That's the land acknowledgement. And, um, and I agree that we can't just, I like this land acknowledgement because I, like, I agree with the fact we can't just talk about it and need to do something, which raises another question. <clears throat> Another big question for Monday morning. I noticed a few people commenting on that. It's awfully big questions for Monday morning. <clears throat> what can we do as a community to do get this work done? Well, first, let's talk about what we already do, uh, because we do quite a bit collectively. And I want to talk about some of the things that the Open Education Network can do for you. And then we're going to then we're going to leap into kind of then what 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 else can we do? All right, but this is just a quick summary in case you're not aware of all the things available to you. 
I've made this kind of compressed list of categories of things that we can do to help. Resources. There are so many resources, everything from the Open Textbook Library that has now, I think, over 1,500 um, open textbooks in it and, and um, reviews of those textbooks, thousands of reviews. Um, we have a ton of kind of programmatic materials that you can find on the Community Hub if you're looking for resources about how to run your program. So, and we as a community collectively have thousands and thousands of resources, whether they are um, libguide pages, um, flyers people have made, slideshows what, that we have shared with each other on the listserv. And so resources, I don't feel like are a shortage of things we have. Training and professional development. These are all of the opportunities. The, these are the opportunities that, that are available for you, professional development for you as professionals to help you do your job better. We have two certificate programs that are very different um, and um, kind of long-term commitments. We have a colleague connector program for you to kind of meet with and kind of get a closer relationship with one or two other people. We have the NICE forum for people running system or consortium programs. We have Pub 101, which is about publishing and the cooperative. And we have this week every year of professional development that's meant for you to help you connect with all of these things. We also have professional development for your instructors, for faculty. We have the OER adoption workshop, open pedagogy workshop, publishing workshop, all of which you will see this week. If you care to, if you wanna see what it's like, you'll see it demonstrated. We have faculty learning circles, which are kind of a strategy for uh, engaging instructors in challenging things like, like pedagogy, you know, open pedagogy. So, um, so that's training and professional development. Those strategies I just described one was the, the learning circles. We also have that tried and true strategy of, for adoption, which is to um, point instructors to the open textbook library, incentivize them to write a review. And that really is a, uh, like I said, a tried and true strategy for, for building adoptions at your institution. There's infrastructure and technology. Um, we have, um, we had a Manifold pilot, which is no longer a pilot. We're now just running Manifold. If this is a system you want to explore and um, want access to, reach out. You can find uh, find that on our on our webpage. You can just reach out and, and we can add you to the group. This is just a, a platform that's available to you as a member for publishing, for online publishing of, of open resources. Uh, this is an old screenshot. This is uh, this is what used to be called Editoria and then was renamed Katita, and now is renamed Ketty. But this is a pilot we're currently running. This is a pro a, a um, platform for publishing open textbooks, and this is a platform you're going to be seeing a lot more of in the coming year. We also have um, Pressbooks offers. OEN members a discount on their platform. Most people are very familiar with Pressbooks and what they can do. So infrastructure and technology is one. And then the human support and, and, and community. The OEN staff, our community itself and the Google group, um, our subgroups that we have of people who are working on specific things like publishing, for example, we, that is probably the main benefit of the OEN existing is connecting all of you to each other. And, um, and, and so, so those are all the kinds of things that we feel like we can do. And our community, by the way, just continues to grow. We all, we have members in all 50 states in Australia and Canada, United Kingdom and, and the EU. Um, we have, uh, 298 colleges and universities who are members. We have 37 members who are who represent statewide systems or consortia, and they themselves are basically supporting about 1,300 institutions. And so, um, altogether, we're supporting nearly 800 institutions. And so, when I talked about community, we have such 
a, a, a rich community to draw from of expertise and people who seem to be really willing and able to step up and share and help. Now, I used this graphic last year in this presentation. I'm going to revisit it here because I think it illustrates this kind of like now, now what? All right. I, I just went through kind of where we are right now. But if this represents our community and, and it represents it and, you know, our members are very different from each other. We have members who are community colleges, tribal institutions. We have R1s. We have uh, U.S. and non-U.S., private, public, large, small. We have, they're just, it's a, a lot of, of richness to our community. And so if we have these circles kind of representing our members and all that, uh, they're, like I said, it's representing a lot, a lot of institutions. But it's a minority of institutions in the U.S. And if you go internationally, obviously so much more of a minority. And so if we're trying to make an impact, if why we wake up every day is we want to help and we want to make, we want to change things and change our systems to make everyone feel welcome, we would help each other a lot if we could change the systems itself. Right, not just necessarily maybe a small corner of our institution or even a large part of our institution. If we could change the system ourselves, because there are a lot of institutions out there and systems beyond the OEN and our membership. And I, so I want to challenge us today to think about how can we make a difference there? How can we make a difference beyond our own community? You're saying, Dave, what are you talking about? Um, it's hard enough to make a difference where I am and at my institution. Totally understand that. And, and um, I get that. But I also want to talk about possibilities. And, and our community already has made different, a difference beyond our own individual walls. Huge differences in talking to each other, right? So, and supporting each other. I want to point out, these are our seven guiding principles that our community relies on. I think they do a really excellent job of reflecting who we are. I want to look at number seven, the one on the bottom, which is the shared abundance. And it's really what I'm going to be talking about today. This shared abundance is basically saying we have what it takes. We collectively have what it takes to solve our own problems. Yeah, you, you know, might question that a little bit. I, and that's fair, I think, to say, well, maybe we need help from X, Y, or Z. Yeah, but I think, but but it should be us solving the problem. We can draw on resources from various places, but um, but we can do it ourselves. We don't need to outsource it. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about shared abundance. Here are people who've already stepped up, um, who stepped up to, to say, I can do more than what I do at my own institution or system or consortia. Here's our steering committee, for example. They are volunteering their time to come together and give us advice and give us feedback and help guide us in, in, in our work for the community to bring that community voice. Um, there are our workshop presenters they may even travel to across the country to run workshops for those institutions who are asking for that, who want and need that expertise on their campus or, or online. There's the Publishing Co-op Advisory Group. And so the Publishing Co-op is a, right, a group of people who are um, responsible for developing the uh, uh, open textbook publishing vision for the community. And um, so, these are all volunteers. These are people who are stepping up and doing this work um, because they're committed to it and they want to see systems be better, right? The Pub 101 Committee. These are our instructors for our certificate programs, for their certificate in open ed librarianship. The certificate, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to go through these relatively quickly and I can't talk about each individual, individual person and recognize them, but certificate in open educational practices. A special shout out for this group who helped us even plan this week, all of our community events. 
and had their voice in this week. So um, please thank them for uh, if you uh, come across them or reach out to them for thank if you have a, a good week this week. Again, I went through these people really fast. So if you want to see all of them, they're list they're all listed on this page right here. We want to make sure people who contributed are recognized and we're aware that this is um, this is something that this is something that um, happens in our community. It makes our community what it is. And if you want to become involved, please again go to this page, look at all the opportunities that are out there, or suggest another, right? So the question is, given that most higher ed institutions exist outside our community, how can we have a larger collective impact on this, on, on higher education generally? So I'm going to go back to my kind of my compressed list of things that seem to help open education programs move forward. And I'm going to talk about just really, really, really briefly, some specific ideas. And these are ideas that have come from, from the community or come up from someone reaching out to us and saying, hey, here's an idea, something the community can do that can have a larger impact. These ideas um, we're not going to discuss today, but we are going to discuss later this week. And I'll tell you when that is here when I'm when I'm when I'm through this list. We're not going to talk about resources so much. Resources, again, I, I, uh, we have a lot of need in that area, but the, I'm, I'm going to kind of plug in some ideas that have come up and they happen to fall under some of these other categories. So training and professional development. Here's an idea that came up from our community. Should we do community-wide faculty workshops? In other words, the OEN, one of our presenters, for example, runs an online workshop that anybody in our community or outside of our community could invite people to, could invite faculty to, like an adoption workshop, for example. And maybe we run it every year or twice a year or whatever. We can track attendance in our dashboard so you can see who from your institution showed up. Um, we could then you know, reach out to um, people who are not in our community, because it would just be an open public kind of workshop that would be available. There are a lot, a lot of logistical challenges with that, like how do you communicate with someone who's not in our community? How do you make them even aware that this is happening? So there's all sorts of challenges with these ideas, even though they seem like it's kind of simple maybe, but but that's an idea that's come up. And, and I would say that all of these ideas, while they may help they may help these institutions who are outside our community. Every one of these ideas also has the potential to help us internally as well in our community. So I think about that. How, is that something that would help you in your work? One of the strategies that we've talked about, engaging engage, faculty engagement strategies, are these are learning circles, especially when it comes to open pedagogy, because pedagogy is complex and there's nothing probably more useful when it comes to helping someone change their pedagogy than providing a safe space to have conversation about it. That's what an open pedagogy learning circle is. So what if we did one where we invited, again, anybody in from any institution, member, non-member? Again, lots of logistical questions there. And I also think it's something that not only would help outside of our community, but would help um, in our community as well. All right, here we go. <laughs> I've been approached by a number of different entities and organizations um, to think about this overlap between open education and AI. I'm guessing there's lots of strong opinions about uh, about this, even in this room and in our community, no doubt. But it's um, strong opinions are great, and we need to bring those out and listen and and hear what you think, and um, and not uh, not dismiss it, not uh, not overly dive into it and rely on it. Now, AI, I'm talking about. I mean, it's it's the hot thing right now, right? But we also can't deny that it's it's here to stay, I think. 
And um, and so it's worth a conversation. It has the potential to really shake things up, to really improve things, to not improve things. Um, and so again, as far as infrastructure and technology goes, this is an idea, a specific idea that we think this community should have a conversation about. And lastly, an idea that has come up over and over again over the years is what we're titling discipline specific faculty affinity groups, which is a long title for just faculty groups. Groups of faculty who say, um, uh, can we somehow facilitate getting faculty together? We hear from faculty all the time. We get emails from them. They fill out our kind of interest form online, membership interest form, even though we don't have faculty members, that's not a thing we do. Like they still fill it out. They're excited. I just got one this morning. I forget which institution it was from, but she was a psychology professor and she was, they just want to connect. They want to reach out and talk to people who are interested in this. They want to learn. They want. So is that something that as a community we could do? All right. Those are ideas. Those are not ideas that I'm saying I have any stand on or I'm pushing or promoting. These are just ideas that our community can, should talk about. And there are other ideas that we want. We want to hear more ideas. I mean, we're always looking for other ideas from the community about what we can do together. And when I say do together, here's the here's the clincher now. I'm talking about us. I'm not talking about all of us. Like we would need to work together on this. The OEN staff is small, small and mighty, as they call themselves. And so they get a lot done. More and we think that there's opportunities for our community to help. So like some a lot of these ideas, some of these ideas, we may need more volunteers from the community to help to do. And again, I recognize that you may say, Dave, no way. Like I do not have the capacity to do any more than what I'm doing. I would guess that's the that's the reality for many, many of us, right? That it just we're we're already we're already up to here. That's fine. And and this is not, you know, any kind of mandate of anything of, you know, oh, if you're going to be a member, you got to do that. No, it's saying, hey, do we have people who are interested? Maybe they're motivated. Maybe there's some sort of external motivation for them. They're rewarded for community engagement and service. And so, I don't know, part of your tenure and promotion or whatever, whatever the reason is, are there, can we as a community do some of these things? That's the conversation that we want to have next Thursday, this Thursday, from 1230 to 145 Central Time. It's what we're calling a community action session. And it's basically, we are going to tee up those four ideas, but we're also going to leave space for these broader topics. Are there other training and professional development things we could be doing? We want to talk about this specific idea and then we want to open it up to other ideas. Are there other strategy things that we could be doing? And we're going to talk about this specific learning circles idea, but then are there other things we could be doing to reach out with our strategies to help those um, who don't have access to it and so on. So that's what we're going to talk about. And so please, please join us. We need as much participation, ideas, thoughtfulness in that, in that session as we can. Um, our steering committee members have agreed to come together and help facilitate conversations. We're going to break into smaller groups so that we can talk about these specific ideas. But um, please do, please, please be there. So um, in summary, really, uh, that's what we want to focus on this year. We want to focus on what more can we do as a community? What more, what more of an impact can we make for those students who come to those, come to our doors with a dream, with a vision of who they want to be and what they want to do? They come to the doors of every higher education system in the US, in every country in the world. And how can we make a bigger difference? We're not going to solve it. But how can we make a bigger dent in helping more of those students realize what they want to be doing? If you haven't seen the schedule for this week, I want to throw that out there right now. The URL is at the top there. Um, if uh, Lorraine, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'm surprising her with this. 
dropping that in the chat. I would really appreciate that or somebody. But here's a, here it is, and you can see that we have a lot of things going on, opportunities for you to connect with each, with each other, opportunities for you to, sorry, engage with each other, opportunities for you to engage with our programming. Thank you, thanks, Lauren. Uh, and you can see like Tuesday is focused on adoption programming. Wednesday is thinking more about publishing. Thursday, open pedagogy and our community action session that I mentioned that we're gonna talk about all of these different structures. Um, we have OEN 101, which is just kind of an introduction to the OEN for members who are newer or maybe want a refreshment on refresher on what's what we do, what we can do to help you. The community co-working jam is an opportunity for you to get together and work with other members, meet other people, so on. There's also the Colleague Connector Live at the end of the week. Anyway, you can see that if you go to that URL, you can see descriptions in um, uh, uh, there about what these sessions are about. Lastly, I want to thank this crew. And this is a group, this is the small and mighty team that um, wakes up every morning thinking about how they can help you. Honestly, that's what they do. They are, if you know them, you know how committed they are to their work and to this community. And so please don't hesitate to reach out to them for whatever reason or whatever you need. And uh, they'll be there for you. You will get a response. Uh, that's just that's just who they are. You know. I especially want to thank Barb for the her work on this week. Barb was uh, Barb is the the organizer extraordinaire and brains behind the organization and just the, the programming, pulling everybody together. Everyone's done their part, but um, Barb is the glue who's, who uh, held us all together and is, will hold us together this week. So, so thanks, Barb. There you go. Um, that is it. I want to thank you all for your time. And um, if you wanted to see that land acknowledgement that I mentioned in the middle, that will be referred to in every session. You'll see that link in every session this week. Uh, we will refer to that. And also our community norms uh, and just kind of agreements that we have on how we're going to make each other feel welcomed and make each other feel like we belong in this week in our community. So there's the social media stuff on the right that I know nothing about, but I will put it there. And you can do, if you are a social media person, do that thing. Uh, and... Uh, I think we have time probably if people have some questions or comments or thoughts. Um, I don't know how to handle that exactly. I don't know if we even, I think I have about five minutes. You wanna try putting your questions in the chat maybe? How many people do we have online? About a hundred. Yeah, there we go. That might avoid some chaos. Just put it in the chat. Doesn't that be questions? It could be comments, thoughts, ideas, whatever you want. Hi, Cheryl. Um, challenges for the OEN moving forward? Boy. Um, that's a good one. I don't, I, uh, I don't tend to think about challenges. I think I, I, I'm honestly like I it, that's a that's a little shift for me. I tend to think about there's so many opportunities that were standing in front of us. I think um, I think understanding the role of AI is a big one um, currently. And and there are people online here who know so much more about copyright than I do. And you can correct if I if I'm what I'm about to say is wrong. Please correct me. AI created content is not is basically public domain. What does that mean for open education? I, I don't know. So, uh, and, but it's something, again, we need to talk about and have people more knowledgeable than me in the room talking about these kind of technical pieces, people dreaming about perhaps how it would make their world, their life easier for their, them, for their instructors, for their students. I think there are opportunities there. Um, there have been a number of ideas floated to us about things that maybe we could do together. So, so that's one. And I and I think if we ignore it, that might be a challenge. That might end up being a challenge if we don't have those conversations uh, about AI. Um, 
right. Uh, uh, I'm going to jump to Kathy's question. How many volunteers can come from, from one membership community? Um, basically, you're talking about capacity, Kathy, I'm assuming. Like, like, like how much, how much time can, do we have? How much of an impact? Well, okay, this is... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just unmuted without permission. But no, yes. I was just thinking as we're looking at that, at the opportunities, I have a couple of faculty members that I think would be interested in helping serve on some of those committees or, or whatever the working groups. Um, but I don't know how many yeah. people can officially be involved from on our dime. Does that make sense? Yep, makes sense. And I think that... Um is exactly the kind of comment we're looking for because what you just did was kind of broke open like you just broke open a whole floodgate of people who could help you just said oh but faculty can help too not just necessarily the people who are on this call which most of us are not most are not faculty right most of us are are professional supporting faculty librarians instructional designers whoever you may be so kathy that comment is a good it's a good question i don't know the answer to it but I would say that our own limitations about how many people can be involved um, would need to change if we really saw potential in like, we could make a bigger impact if we could engage more faculty in this work. I mean, it has to be manageable, but I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but that's, you know, the more people we can get involved in creating solutions, I think like we, we will do some results, I think, to. To help with that so okay uh we just have a couple minutes left here i love the idea of connecting faculty with each other and further engaging faculty. okay great <laughs> yeah amy i get it um yes yeah lauren i like i love that you know, AI might be here to stay, but we can still decide how it aligns or doesn't with our values. Love it. Yes. That's exactly why we need to have the conversation. How do we make it, if, if it's going to be around, if it is, how do we make it work for us, for what we're trying to accomplish, rather than getting in the way or just being another barrier to something? Yeah. Yep. And Adrian agrees. <laughs> Every person is another email. Exactly. Okay. Well, I think, uh, thank you for that. Awesome. I really honestly hope you show up. I will be there on Thursday um, and for these conversations. I think these are critical, important conversations that are going to make, they're going to decide some um, uh, the future of this community and that are some of the directions we're going to go and be able to do. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm really, I can't wait to have those conversations. So with that, I think we are at time. And um, I thank you so, so much for being here. Please uh, make the most of this week and um, make the most of this community. Okay. Take care of yourselves. All right. Bye-bye.